for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For he sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Welcome to Soaring Like Eagles with Minister Larry Bertrand and Prophetess Mary Bertrand. Please sit back, enjoy the show, grab your Bible, and get ready for a word of inspiration and praise. Welcome to my gospel soul, soaring like eagles. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed the song and everything. Let me see if my boy David can hear me. David, are you on the line? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I hear you. Can you hear me? I I hear you. I hear you. Okay. Hey, okay. Man, there man. we go. There we okay, go. Okay. We got it. We got to run into a little technical difficulty on today. Um, going to look terrible in the feedback, but hey, <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. You all welcome to Soaring Like Eagles with myself, uh, Pastor Larry Bertrand, 
none other than our wonderful First Lady. Good evening. I hope everyone has had an awesome weekend. And also um, an awesome Monday, a good start, especially I hope everyone's staying safe and have their mask on and their gloves. We want to make sure that we are staying safe. I want to also, if anyone has any prayer requests, please make sure to inbox us um, on our page with Living Springs Community Church or Eagles um, United Ministries, the full gospel ministries page. Please make sure you do get in your prayer requests. We hope everyone has an awesome week. Amen, amen, amen. And then on the line as well, we got our cousins. All the way from North Carolina. Go on. Dave, go ahead and introduce yourself. Well, family, I am David Clark um, out of Charlotte, North Carolina. And it is such a wonderful pleasure to be here, uh, of course, with the, with the family, uh, with my family, mm-hmm. um, especially since last time I was cordially invited. Uh, I was actually on, but for some reason, I, like, I could hear you all, but you all couldn't hear me. And that's when we found out that that T-Mobile thing, with, you know, with the satellite coming and everything like that was going uh, AWIRE. But, listen, we're here now, and I am so happy to be here. Thank you all so very much. Okay. The phone was on mute. Okay. I'm not, sure. I'm not sure where we left off at. David, what really? did you hear? <laughs> well, you, uh, you, you asked me to introduce myself, and I did. Okay. Yeah. All right. I did. I, I, I did. Hold it. <laughs> wow. Okay. I, I can go back over today. It easy. Technical difficulties <laughs> today. Technical difficulties yeah, on today. Don't want to get to it, so let's get to it. Man, this is <laughs> something. My <laughs> God. My God. <laughs> you know what, David? I'm not going to let you know. Um, something very powerful happened. Amen. Last time we had technical difficulties like mm-hmm. this. Um, yeah. We were doing a Bible study um, on Facebook Live. It was myself and Apostle Jay. We were doing a Bible study on Facebook Live, and while we were um, doing the Bible study, we were having a lot of technical calm with the sound and with the viewing and everything. There's so much going on, so many technical difficulties going on that we had to stop and we just had to pray. And in that moment of praying, we see all of the technical difficulties lift up and God really moved through the rest of that Bible study. So... I already know what technical difficulties do. You know what I'm saying, bro? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely do. I definitely understand that, brother. Amen, amen, amen. Um, so what I was also saying, wow, nobody could hear me. <laughs> I was also talking about how we just celebrated a major holiday. We just celebrated Father's Day. Um, and... We, you know, we don't really give enough credit on Father's Day. We don't really, we don't really, um, we don't really talk about Father's Day the way it really needs to be talked about. We don't um, really give it the attention it needs. But we have to understand that fathers are very important, mm-hmm. especially in a child's life, daughter or son, actually. Um, I believe that it still is equally as important mm-hmm. for a daughter to have that relationship with her father. Mm-hmm. It kind of keeps her away from going into relationships with those thugs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So mm-hmm. I believe that's important as well. And it's definitely important for a young man to have a relationship with his father because that helps him in guiding him in knowing what it takes to be a man. Mm-hmm. Um that's one thing I say all the time is that a woman can never really teach a man, can never teach a boy how to be a man because of the fact that although, you know, we could try, you give so many examples and everything like that, 
as a boy, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look into the man that's around me, and I'm going to start picking up those traits. Right. And I'm going to pick up those characteristics because that's the first thing that I see. Right. You know what I'm saying? So although you're trying to teach me about manhood, I'm still going to look at the man that I see and determine that that's what manhood is supposed to be. Um, and um, so it's important that we understand that. And that uh, we um, understand the importance of having positive male role models in our children's lives. Um, I think that's an important thing as well uh, for us to know that the people we have in our child's life is, um, you know, a positive role model and somebody who would help and instill the same principles and values that we try to instill in our children. Um, it takes a village to raise a child. And when we say it takes a village, it's not going to just, just be mom and pops all the time. Sometimes it's going to be moms and pops, and it's going to be um, a whaler from across the way, amen, and it's going to be our grandmother from the other side of town, and it's going to be the other grandmother that's in the other state, amen, and it's going to be, it's going to be the godparents who might be somewhere else, right? It's going to be the aunties that's in the uncles that we have in. Um, so it's going to be more than just um, moms and pops all the time. You know, it's going to be other family members who step in and help out and give a helping hand and help us along the way as well. It has really takes that village to raise a child. What do you think about that, David? Well, listen, I'm I'm all uh... – <laughs> I'm all uh, I'm all definitely in agreement with what you with what uh, you just said, um, brother. But one of the things is, uh, li- listen, this may be a show that you may not invite me back to, but I'm gonna just be real with you. Cause, like when you told me when you told me when you told me what the what 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 your subject was for this evening, I said, oh, that's mm-hmm. that's just an area I know all too well because I don't come from a, a two parent home. I come from uh, you know the the stigma, quote unquote. A single parent home, where, you know, where the single parent is uh, just is just the mom, and of course, you know, me being a, a boy, mm-hmm. um, then on top of that, you know, the whole struggling dynamic. Listen, I, I know that aspect all too well. This is right up my alley. Mm-hmm. One of the things is what I will say is one of the simple facts. Um, yes, it is extremely important to have uh, the father um, involved, actively involved, whether he is under the same roof or not with his. Mm-hmm. Um, with his uh, child's mother um, or his children's mother, that's perfectly fine. You can still be a great dad. You can still do everything you need to do, whether you live under the same roof or not. But here's here's exactly. here's, here's the issue too, though, is because of the simple fact is, uh, oh man, I'm trying my best to be uh, trying to hold my tongue, you know. Uh, but one of the I'm things not, is let it, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> one of the one of the because like in it. And, and this is just me. This is just me being candid. I mean, we're family, so I can talk to y'all like this. I mm-hmm. had, even still to this day, I still, well, Father's Day was like, what, last week? I mm-hmm. still, even to this day, have a true disdain for Father's Day. Oh. I really, truly, I really do. And I have no, I really, really do. Um, Because of the simple fact is like, you take away the most important dynamic of a family, or at least one of the most important dynamics, because mom and mom and uh, father they're equal. But you take that out, and then you have this hole, right? And in this hole, um, you 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 still try to fill it, and you try to fill it with different voids because of the simple fact: if the person that helped created you could walk out on, what's stopping anybody else? But I, let me get, let me stay on point. Um, I, re- I really never had a, a liking for it. I never really kept up with it. Um, but this past uh, Father's Day, I, my church does a prayer line, and I lead uh, Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. So, of course, Sunday being Father's Day, I led. And okay. I, I end up being a little bit too open. I'm not one to, again, share my feelings. But I said today is, is this always a, a hard day for me because, um, again, as I just said, Growing up in a single parent home, dad, uh, you know, literally Michael Jackson moonwalked out my life. That's all well and good because what I didn't have in the Smith 
which was his last name, when I didn't have in a Smith, I had in a McCullough, which was one of my spiritual fathers. What I didn't have in a Smith, I had in a Brown, which is now my pastor, um, who I connect with extremely well. What I didn't have in a Smith, I've had uh, in a Bolton, which is one of the uh, uh, elders at my church. You know, the, the other father figures, you know, the, especially the spiritual fathers uh, that stepped in um, and literally – uh, corrected me, uh, it was, but but in love, but always corrected me, always uh, showed me uh, how to be a man, especially on the spiritual side. Um, how to uh, how to up, how to maintain great and upstanding character. Uh, I had all of that from other people, but I never had that uh, with my own. You know, someone who I came from. So mm-hmm. I, I trust me, and I'm I'm a hold back. <laughs> Not gonna go mm-hmm. in on your show, brother, but uh, yeah, that's just that's just that's just that's just my feeling. So then sometimes, and I'm gonna say this sometimes, uh, sometimes it's better not to have that person in the home and in your life if that person mm-hmm. is toxic. Mm-hmm. If the dad is toxic, if exactly. if 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 things cannot maintain uh, and run at an optimum level at at peak level with either the dad or mom in the household, something has to give. Something mm-hmm. has to give because what you're doing is by you trying to keep your family together and keep that dad in the home, especially because, sister, you didn't grow up with your dad in your home, listen, that's doing nothing but trickling down to your kids. Kids are sponges. Kids pick up on energy. Everything doesn't have to be uh, physically said. Uh, some things don't have to be, well, I'm sorry, verbally said. Some things don't have to be physically done. But kids pick up on that energy. Um, you being a mom, you giving birth to your child slash children, they pick up on that. They came from you. They feel you on a completely <laughs> different level. They feel you. So what you allow, you unintentionally tell your kids, you tell your son, okay, this is how you're supposed to do a woman because, again, you see me getting treated like this, so you're going to think that's right. Then on top of that, you're telling your daughter, okay, uh, daughter, this is how you're supposed to be treated, and it throws off the whole family dynamic because of the simple fact is I know what my mom did with me by herself with no help but the Lord. So that's why I say I definitely, definitely get you, uh, Elder, Elder Larry. I promise you I do because if it had not been for God keeping his hand on me directly, I wouldn't mm-hmm. be on phone you. Amen. 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 And you know what? One thing we have to always understand is that um, the father that's in our life, amen, it's not going to always be the biological father. And that's one thing we got to understand as well is that, you know what I'm saying, the father that's in our lives oftentimes is going to be the stepfather or he's going to be the grandfather. You know what I'm saying? Or it's going to be that cousin, the older cousin that we just up to. You know what I'm saying? Oftentimes, it's not the actual father, the actual biological father, that's the father in that child's life. But, you know, the outsider, the people who stepped in, the people who came in, you know what I'm saying? The people who helped out, those role models. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Those are sometimes who actually ends up being the father yeah. for that person because that's who we look up to. You know what I'm saying? That's who we idolize. You know what I'm saying? I see myself right now today. Going and going, going around saying things that my grandfather used to say, yeah. and I would be like, "Where I get that from?" You know what I'm saying? I say, "I like my grandfather now." You know what I'm saying? I remember um, one of my son's friends came over, and ended up breaking something in my house, and I, I'd put on that old, that old man voice, and I said, "Now look here, son, if you're gonna be coming over here. You're gonna be uh, breaking up stuff. You hear me? You hear me now? All right." And you know what I'm saying? And I was realizing. Like, man, I sounded just like my grandfather. You know what I'm saying? Like, I realized that I don't even think I did on a conscious level. But when I said it, I was like, yo, I sound just like my grandfather. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't understand the importance that that person played at that moment in time. But real talk, I mean, to be honest with you, Brian, Brother David, I didn't have my father around really growing up in the early East. I didn't have my father around growing up either. You get what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you ask me who my father is, I'm going to tell you my grandfather. And honestly, on that, even on that level, to be truthfully honest about it, me and my grandfather did not have the best relationship growing up as a child. But still, this is the things that he taught me, and it's the things that he instilled in me. Even as I was a child, I wasn't even paying attention to. That makes me be like, okay, this is my father, because I realized 
and he was always teaching me something. Right. Even whether I received it at the time or I did not receive it at the time, it was always something he was teaching me. Right. And then also, David, with your dad and even with um, with Larry's dad, like, you all's father is not being there taught you all something also and something that you wouldn't want to be t- towards your children, you know? So you have to take the lesson in that yeah. also. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, absolutely. That is so true. That is so true. I remember when um when I got married the first time, um, and I was thinking to myself because I had a whole bunch of warrants out with Harris County at the time, and I was thinking to myself, I want to go ahead and get these warrants out the way with before I get married and have a family. Because the last thing I wanted to do was to have to, to have to leave my family for even a day or a few hours. To have to go serve time with the warrant. Well, the last thing I wanted to do was to have my children have to see me being walked away in handcuffs. You get what I'm saying? That's always been a big thing for me. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's definitely been important for me to understand the, um, the dynamic of, um, I guess, being a father, right, mm-hmm. and being a family man because of the fact that, you know, my dad did not do that. My dad did not make sure that, um, you know, he made decisions. Mm-hmm. To make sure he was gonna be around, um, and make sure he didn't have to spend a day apart from us yeah. or anything like that. Those aren't some decisions he made, and because he didn't make those decisions, it played a major role in the relationship that all of his kids have with him, yeah. um, including myself. But um, with that being said, I knew that I wanted something different. I knew that I had to do something different. Amen. Even growing up, Amen. If you told me. Acting like my daddy, I got mad at you. <laughs> I did not want to hear that. Don't tell me I'm anything like my daddy because um, I could not admire my daddy. I could not look up to my daddy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that that Don't was that bad. was your that was your trigger too. That was mine too. I oh my, was listen, mine. I don't care who you were. Those were fighting words for real. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll step back real quick. I ain't nothing like my daddy. Yeah, but um, but yeah, then you know what I'm saying. And the thing was, but I mean, and the thing was, it's so crazy because I had to carry that and remember that. You know what I'm saying. So even when I got in the midst of doing my own thing, it's funny the way God he speaks into your life. Because as much as I used to say, "Don't tell me I'm acting like my daddy," the first time I got in trouble and I got arrested, um, as a teenager. The cop who arrested me was like, "Oh, I recognize your name. I must record. I must arrest your old man before." And automatically, that triggered me right then because I'm realizing that I'm falling into my father's footsteps, and I'm starting to become what he what he is. And I was like, "Nope, got to do something different." You know what I'm saying? And it was the, it was those decisions that made me leave the south side of Chicago and come all the way out to Hicksville, Houston, Texas, yeah. where they was riding horses on the street. <laughs> but but it was those kind of decisions that made me do that because I said I had to change my environment. I had to do something different. I had to make sure that I was not going to fall into the same footsteps and the same pattern, the same mistakes that my, that my father fell into. Um, so, that, I mean, that's really dynamic to say that. But even in the scripture, I'm looking at it, right? Um, go into, um, pull up the scripture back. Matthew 3, 16 through 17. Um, Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and read it, Okay, so again, that's Matthew 3, 16, I'm sorry, 16 through 17. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son, whom I love. 
with him I am well pleased. Amen. Amen. So when I the first thing I think about when I really think about that scripture not and I really think about it, let's be honest about it, amen, is that um God was not his biological, right, father, right? Right. His actually his actual yeah. earthly father was um was Joseph. Yeah. Right? That's his earthly father, right? But it was meant something to him, right? When God spoke down and said, This here is my son in which whom I am well pleased. Right? You know yeah. what I'm saying? It was a significant moment right there. You get what I'm saying? In the, in something that's the thing that we have to understand is that sometimes our father is not going to always be our earthly father. Sometimes our father is not going to always be the one who we see every day or don't see every day. Right. That's not always who our father is, amen? Mm-hmm. But it's going to be other people that God has put into your life and who has to fulfill those roles and to help you to understand that this is your father. If you look in the Bible and you look at the story of Jesus, you don't hear much of Joseph at all. You know what I'm saying? He mentions Joseph, but he carries the respect for Joseph, right, as being his earthly father, right, because you honor and you, you honor your mother and your father. So he carries the respect for him, right? But you understand that when he talks about my father, he's always talking about his, his father of high. He's always talking about um, the creator. He's talking about his spiritual father, right? right? When he talks about his father, he talks about God. He's not talking about Joseph. Right. So, um, and the thing that we have to understand, if we're going to look at it like we're going to really look at it, be honest about it, amen, is that the same father that Jesus has and the same father that Jesus talks about is also the same father that each and every one has, each and every one of us have at the same time. Amen. So at the same time, when we're able to, so when Jesus is able to say about my father's house and, and my father's kingdom and everything like that, we are able to say with that same boldness that my father's house and in our Father's kingdom, because that's what we're striving to get to, and that's where we're trying to go, to be in our Father's place and sit next to our Father, right? That's the Father that we're trying to sit next to, amen, because when the world passes on, amen, um, it's going to be people, right, who's been here on earth, and yes, they did so much for us and meant so much for us, but the thing is, when we try to leave this earth, it's not so I can go be around my grandfather again, right? But it's so I can go... And I could be around the Father who created me. Amen. Amen. So, I mean, that's one thing we all have to realize, amen, is that although, um, I, you know, we may not have the physical presence of a Father around, we still have a God who steps in and takes that role and fulfills that Father for, and, be, and becomes that Father for us. Step in, right? Then, um, and he's all of our fathers, right? Mm-hmm. The same way he was a father to Jesus, amen. And he spoke down the moment, the moment Jesus was baptized and said, This is my son in whom which I am well pleased, mm-hmm. amen. And one thing I thought about when I was thought about that verse, too, is how proud God had to be at that moment, mm-hmm. right? How proud God had to be at that moment for him to even speak down from heaven, right? Uh, and the one thing I thought about is the way that it was a lot of obedience mm-hmm. that had to come with that. Yeah. Um, if we look at that, if we look further at that verse, when Jesus was going to get baptized and he went to John the Baptist, John the Baptist asked him, why am I baptizing you? Mm-hmm. Really, you should be baptizing me. Right. But Jesus responded to him and said, no, this has to be done. So in saying that this has to be done, let you know right there that, hey, this is what I was instructed to do. This is what my father told me to do. So this is what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was that level of obedience, right, mm-hmm. that we have for God right then in knowing that, hey, God said do this, and this is what we're going to do. Now, Elder, look, check this out too, though. That just yeah. shows that just shows that even Jesus being Jesus and who he who he was as a as a spiritual be- as a spiritual being, but also, you know, wrapped in human flesh. I don't even know if it. I don't even know. I, can we call him human? We can debate on that later. But listen, that's yeah. just that just shows that just shows how much 
um, importance it was and it is as a son to receive your father's validation, to receive your father's congratulations, even even mm-hmm. as he, because I'm pretty, I mean, come on now. He was, geez, he already knew what he had to do. But to, mm-hmm. but for him to come up out that water, right, and then have that mm-hmm. light shine down on him, that's validation. Mm-hmm. That's validation. You're worthy of the light. Why are you worthy of the light? Because you're clearly walking in it. Like you just said, you were being mm-hmm. obedient. So I'm like, mm-hmm. wow, wow. But see, that's the thing too, though, because him and him and God had that direct connection. Yes, Joseph was his uh, earthly father, but Joseph didn't have anything to do with his creation. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. And that, the that's a conversation too. for a later date too. <laughs> I'm not trying to go too deep on this. <laughs> but you know what, though, I'm going to touch on the dot because, um, and I already knew this episode was going to kind of go there, and I was ready for it. But when you said it right then, you said that he had to receive his father's validation and how much it meant for him for that light to beam down on him as he was coming out the water and received his father's validation. Um, it makes me think, Doc, okay, man, and um, I, wanted, I wanted for one of our other brothers to be on the line as well when I get into this, but it makes me think about the mother who intentionally keeps the fathers out of their children's lives. And the suffering that that does to the children, just because you have a problem, just because you don't like the person that they're with now, just because it didn't work out between you and that person, just because they don't want to be with you anymore, then you try to separate them from that child's life. And that child never gets to see the validation that his father really has for him because you are so busy trying to distance them because of the relationship that you don't have. With that person, yeah. it's sad. Uh-huh. It's sad. It's embarrassing. It, I mean, you're absolutely right. And that's the thing. We, hey man, we have to um, be able to be mature enough, right, to say, you know what? Although this did not work out, these are still your children, and I'm not gonna do anything to keep you away from your children. You know what I'm saying? Although me and you did not work out, and although I might not be able to stand you. Guess what? I'm not going to talk down on you in front of your children. I'm going to let them form their own opinion of you. I'm not going to say anything negative about you. You know what I'm saying? And that's a, that, but that's taking a level of maturity right there. That takes a level of, um, and the thing is, when we're out here, and, man, and we're young, and we're having babies, we're not understanding that level of maturity that it actually takes in raising kids. Mm-hmm. A lot. Because, yeah. I mean, honestly, A but lot. you got to understand it too, amen, because I'm not sure if you've ever been in this position, but um, I remember the first time that um, that a girl came to me and told me that she was pregnant, amen, at that moment, at that very moment, everything I did started to change around because I knew that I would no longer be able to live life for myself but it was also another life that was going to be depending on me as well, depending on the decisions that I made, depending on the things that I did, so on and so forth. You get what I'm saying? So when that was told to me, I immediately had to make sure that the decisions I was making and even my future decisions would be that that's beneficial towards that child. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is, we have so many people who are, um, who are young and they don't have that revelation. They don't have that when they when they get pregnant. Oh, my life is changing. Oh, I can't do the things I used to. Oh, no. they be like, oh, I'm having baby. I'm still going out. I want to stay with my mom. I'm going to still go to the club, though. You know what I'm saying? Or we as men. Oh, man, she going to take care of the baby. I'm good. Oh, yeah, I don't have to come around like that. I don't even want to be around her. That baby could. I'll send some money every now and again. My mama gave her money. He good. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing that we focus on because we don't understand the whole life form that just came with having this child. The whole responsibility that just came in having this child. The whole everything that way, you know what I'm saying, this child is going to look up to you years down the line. 
and look at you years down the line. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that we have to understand. When we're having children, we have to understand the level of maturity that comes with that so we don't let our children suffer because of the things that we have dealing with us internally. Mm-hmm. And see, you know what, uh, Larry, that's, 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 yeah. that you see, it, it's just, I promise you, brother, you be on it. Um, listen, listen to though, that also speaks to family dynamics because if, uh, if a man's dad wasn't there for him, he, what does he really know to do? Especially if he's not, as you said, that key M word that you said, uh, mature enough. If he's not mature enough to say, okay, well, I know the uh, negative effects that this has on a child uh, when their dad walks out on them. Now, you know, as I said, mm-hmm. it, you know, some dads are there for are not there for different reasons. Um, listen, major respect to my dads uh, out there, to my fathers out there who are not in their child's life because of unforeseen circumstances. So let's say, for example, uh, the military route, mm-hmm. right? You get drafted, you know, or you have you choose to enlist. That's that's very respectful for those dads that can't be there because. Uh, physical abilities of your your physical condition uh prevents you not from being there you know some dads are truly ill that's perfectly fine mm-hmm. too i definitely say a prayer for them and some dads are deceased uh, that's perfectly fine mm-hmm. too again our hearts and prayers go out for them but if you know your situation doesn't fall fall in that and your dad leaves now you're not mature enough to Say you know what? Let me stop this cycle before it really is even created. You know, let mm-hmm. me let me break this curse right here, right now. Um, and then you start exhibiting the same kind of deadbeat dad behavior. Okay, uh, now now you dig a little bit deeper. Come to find out, your grandfather did your dad the exact same way. Okay, cool. Let's mm-hmm. let's expand it. Right? You look into your own family. Nobody in your family's really 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 do the marriage thing like that. You know, their their relationship from relationship. You know, they had a kid over here, yeah. had a kid over there, had a kid over here, had a kid over there. And, and with no regard, you know, meaning they they're doing it, you know, just because, you know, for the listen, y'all, y'all, listen, we're all we're all adults. They do it for the first, they 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 do it for the beginning of the year time and the end of the year time. Y'all already know what I'm talking about. So it's just like, when are we going to be mature enough as men, as mm-hmm. men and as women to say, okay, listen, we have a child, whether we whether we planned it or not, we have a child. What is what is the best interest of the child? How can we make sure that we both equally execute the best interest of this child for this child? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it's a simple conversation. No, it's not hard to do, but the but the but the, mm-hmm. the but the plan behind, beside it is not that difficult. If you can't do nothing else, get along. <laughs> get yeah. along. Like, if you can't do anything else, get along. See, see, elder, see, elder. That's exactly why. That's like me. I'm going back on mute. No, that's no, that's that's the basics, but that comes that comes with also knowing someone and not letting their personal growth and your personal growth, even though it's in two different directions, not letting it affect you know you all's friendship that hopefully you all have. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that takes maturity, yeah. <laughs> and that takes also like really knowing like really diving into the word and seeing you have your own personal journey. You're going to meet Mm -hmm. several people along the way, several. So you don't want to stifle anyone else's journey. You don't want to stifle what God has to put them through or you, you understand what I'm saying? So it, it, it's bigger than us, but some people take stuff so personal and they want to hold on to something so bad that they don't look at the bigger picture. That happens often. Actually. You know what, though? Like, I mean, for me, myself, and I'm not sure if you've ever been in this situation, David, but um, I have dated women who have, have had, who have children. And in dating women who have children, one thing that I look at is the relationship that that woman has with the father of her children before I even go into a relationship there. And the reason for that is because that lets me know where you are as a woman, where you are on a maturity level. You know what I'm saying? Are you mature enough to keep a friendship going with the father of your children and be able to co-parent effectively? Or are you so immature that 
you can't even be around each other without thinking together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or are you so immature that you are doing things that's going to cause drama and friction between the baby father and the person that you're dating? Right. You get what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Before I, before I met Mary, I dated a woman who had two kids. And one thing, what well, you want me to move in with her? And I'm like, okay, that's cool, but let me sit down and talk to your baby father because if I'm going to be around his daughter every day, I want for him to at least see who I am. You know what I'm saying? And she told me, yeah. oh, no, I don't want to Yeah. You know yeah, that's saying? good, bro. That's good. Right. But she told me no. And I'm like, what? No. Like, what do you mean? Why? Why is if this person is really no longer in your life like that, right? And you all are just co-parenting, and that's all that's going on between you all. Why is it that you don't want him to meet the person that he'll see going to be around his daughter all the time? You know what I'm saying? Especially if he's active in his daughter's life. He's going to find out I'm around. His daughter's going to come home one day and say, yeah, uh, Larry and Mommy at the house. You know what I'm saying? It's going to happen. Right? I mean, so... So, I mean, if we know that that's going to happen, you know what I'm saying, why not already, you know what I'm saying, put it out there and say, hey, this situation, I just wanted to introduce myself to you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But, when you, but when y'all see you have a problem with that, it's obviously you have a problem with it because, A, that relationship, those, those soul ties haven't really been severed yet, and there's still something there, right? Or because... It's not a mature relationship going on. It's not a mature thing going on. And you all are going back and forth with each other about who each other's dating and everything like that. Either way, I don't have time for either of those two situations. So that's one of the things we have to look at, too. And, I mean, you're able to tell a lot. You're able to tell a lot about a woman who by the way she treats her children. Amen. And when you step in yeah. to a relationship with a woman who has children, you can understand the dynamics of that woman by looking at the way that she treats her children and the way that she's around her children and the type of relationship she has in her children's life. You know what I'm saying? And that's one of the great things about it. But in looking at it, too, you have to also understand, too, that um, – it helps you even more to understand the dynamics of a woman by understanding the type of maturity that that woman has when it comes down to parenting her children. Who do you have? You know what I'm saying? Do you have a mother or do you have a friend? You get what I'm saying? Is this the child's mother or is this a homegirl? You know what I'm saying? Is this the child's mother or is this somebody that they just right here and talk about God too. You know what I'm saying? You got to understand what what role is she playing in her child's life to really understand the dynamics of how mature that woman really is. Have you been in that situation? Yes. Have you dated a woman with children yet? Uh, um, in the talking stages, but not officially dated. But yeah, I'm I'm pretty experienced in that area. Uh, because of the simple mm-hmm. fact, like when it was when it was me, I'm 26, so I was like 20, uh, 20 at the time. Um, mm-hmm. She had a daughter, uh, like was like I want to say four or five. Um, so yeah, I mean, but how, how you said it, and you said it perfectly, man. You're a wordsmith. How she how she interacts, how she treats her daughter, is a direct reflection of uh, how she. Uh, how how she how, how like the type of person that she is one, but also how she thinks about herself. Uh, how can mm-hmm. you treat someone low that came from you that you pushed out that you carried from nine mm-hmm. months? Um, how can you do mm-hmm. that? So and I and I'm mm-hmm. listen. I look for that even with uh, female friends, uh, some 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 you know some real good acquaintances that I have. I look mm-hmm. at how you do your child uh, because mm-hmm. if you do your child and treat and treat your child like crap. Well, what you gonna do to me? And here's the thing, too, uh, Elder Larry, that I can't personally cannot stand. We take our last three minutes. 
for you to put your significant other before your child. That's where I completely hop off the damn. I I can't. I that 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 grinds my gears. That that irks my nerves because of the simple fact is again you you as a woman you you carried her, you carried your child, you carried your son, you carried them for nine months, and you risked your life giving birth. There was nobody mm-hmm. but God that kept you and your child safe, or you and your children safe as you were giving birth. Why would you then put somebody else in their spot, especially if you don't even know if that if that man's name is not J-O-D or mm-hmm. Jesus Christ himself and not Jesus? I, I, I'm off the bandwagon. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I mean, here's the thing, though, because, um, you know, instead of putting a significant other, before your children is definitely a no a no go, right? But if you're talking about the matter of your spouse, mm-hmm. then that definitely comes before the children. Because it's God first, then it's you and your spouse, and then it's the children. But the reason for that is because if you're about to marry if you're marrying this person and this is the person that you're gonna be with for your life, you know that this person has just as much interest in your children as you do. So exactly. therefore, it's okay to put that person above the children because you know that you will put them above the children, but together you and that person are going to make sure the children are good. You know, so, but what happens and, what, and the thing that hurts me the most is that we let the fly by night and we let random come in and we let them disrespect our children. We let them talk to our children any kind of way. We let people come in, be hitting or putting their hands on our children, you know, and instead of trying to be, you know, a blessing towards our children, they talk down to our children. You get what I'm saying? It's one of those things that irks me. I remember my god sister was dating some guy, and um, every time his daughter would talk, he'd be like, shut up, or something like that. And I had to tell him, I was like, hold on, wait a minute. Let's put the brakes in it because this is my niece you're talking to. You know what I'm saying? But I I did not like the way he was communicating, right? Because I feel like if you're trying to really be a part of this child, if you, first of all, let's be honest with you, if you really try to be a part of this woman's life, then the main thing you want to do is make sure that you have a good relationship and a good rapport with the children as well. You know what I'm saying? So in that being said, I'm not going to sit here and disrespect your children. And the reason why I'm not going to even disrespect your children, even if your children are being disrespectful to me, is because of the respect that I have for you and because I'm trying to get to know you and I'm trying to see what me and you can do. So in there, I'm going to be, as I'm going to treat the children right. I'm going to, you know, take them out and I'm going to try to be a part of their life because I realize that I cannot be a part of your life if I'm not a part of your children's life as well. Yeah. But the thing is, people get with people who don't understand, hey, I'm, I'm going to be a part of your life, I'm going to be a part of your children's life too. And then they let, they allow them things to come in. I remember I was, I was, uh, one of my friends literally told this girl, he hated his daughter. He hated her daughter. Literally told her that. And I was like, oh, she's done now. She about to walk out that door. She's going to never come back. And all she did was went in that room and cried. Mm-hmm. And that's the first thing I thought was, what kind of mother? You know what I'm saying? Would sit there and literally let a man say that about their daughter. Mm-hmm. But then instead of you sitting there leaving and packing up your stuff and getting your strength to leave, you go in the room and you cry and you spend the night and everything's okay in the morning. You know what I'm saying? It's the but how much are you valuing yourself though? And that's another thing to it. A woman who don't who has no value for herself would allow that. Because they think that's the best they can get. I can't do no better than this. He said he hates it now. Maybe he'll learn to love me one day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How much value you have for yourself? to see what kind of person you would allow to be in your life and in your child's life. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and I, I've seen I've seen both aspects of that. I've seen you know where a, a woman has said that, but I've also seen mothers uh, who are on uh, like you know a little bit more mature mothers uh, have that same kind of attitude. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. the, the the perfect phrase is, and I'm gonna just go here. The perfect phrase is. Uh, uh, I want to live my life. You know, all my kids are grown. You know, uh, I'm done. You know, those those mm-hmm. those phrases. Um, but that's all well and good, and you absolutely are right, sis. But one of the things is you cannot uh, lose your self respect. You cannot lose value within yourself just because your kids are grown. You cannot allow yourself to be treated any type of way just because you want to live your life. You cannot settle for. Uh, you know, Joe Smo that, you know, gives you a, a ring and just because he gives you that ring, listen, the ring is the ring is cool. Uh the ring is fine, but I, I and as a man, uh Elder Larry, and you'll you'll probably mm-hmm. agree with this. Uh hopefully hopefully I mm-hmm. word it correctly. But uh sis, before you said yes to that ring, you said yes to uh Larry's actions, right? He showed you he showed you with his own actions right, how he maneuvered mm-hmm. that once he gave you that ring, things would be good. Now, of course, his game will elevate, but as, as far as getting the yes, as far as getting the yes to the ring, the yes to the marriage, the yes to the rest of your life, he had to show you with his actions. It kills me right. to see a woman say yes off of average actions. See, I'm, I'm, going, back, I'm going back on mute. <laughs> I'm going no. back on mute. <laughs> it's the truth, though. It's the truth, but it's 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 just dependent on the person and what they're going through, and how old they are, the things that they've been through already in life. Sometimes it don't depend on how old they are, cause you'll be amazed. But the things they've been through in life and their maturity, you get better. Thank God. Thank God. You know that you get better. <laughs> yeah. The older you get, hopefully you do. Hopefully you learn and you get better and you actually gain wisdom so that you value yourself so much that you only want good things and good people around you. Yeah, and that's my biggest thing. I had to realize that every battle is not mine, uh, you know, because I, I care about people. I care about people, y'all, Like, and, and it don't matter if I know you or not. Uh, because you are simply a human being, I care about you, especially when you're a woman, you know, and you're, t- you know, talking about your love life, because again, uh, I, you are the same thing as my mom. I watch my mom, you know, I have the utmost respect for my mom and my grandmother. So I'm going to have the, the just amount of much love and respect for you. And I, and I truly want the best for you. It just kills me when, like, like you said, depending on that person, when they don't want the best for themselves, when they're willing to settle. And then, and then the right. thing is when they have the nerve, <laughs> To say, uh, I feel that God wants me. I feel like you are the one that God created for me. And I'm like, yo, please, like, please stop. Like, you don't lie on God. Now, it's one thing for you to say. It's one thing for you want to, for you personally to want to be with Him. But don't bring God in there. Don't lie on God like that. Yeah. He clearly states who He, who He clearly has for you. It's clearly in there. Uh, he will check off every single one of those boxes. Yeah, uh, when he said in his word, but don't blame God for that. I'm sorry, I'm going back on you. I'm, I, I'm going back on you. <laughs> That's why I want to touch this subject. I knew where I was going. I didn't want to touch this. Thank you so very much, Elder Larry, though, again, for extending the invitation, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And um, we're about to end up closing out this um, segment here, but we want to go ahead and just really take a moment to um, be in prayer for the single mothers that are out there. I know it takes a lot in being a single mother, a lot of responsibility. It takes a lot when you're trying to carry both roles. Um, I know I know when I was young, I gave my mom a Mother's Day card and a Father's Day card. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But, yes, um, yes. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, so I definitely want to commend all of the single mothers who are out there as well. But I also want to encourage you, too, to make sure you have positive male role models around as to help and um, to help in being something visual that the child can see and something that he can look up to on a visual aspect. I think that that's important. 
Um, and the reason why I say that is because I know myself, I took on two roles. I took on two personalities kind of when I grew up. I took on that of my grandfather, but I also took on that of my older cousin. And it's because that's who, who I was, I was, those were the men that I was around. So when I was 18, 19, 20 years old and I was in my play away, I realized I was doing the same thing that my older cousin was doing, mm-hmm. and I was following in his footsteps. So thank God that God delivered me from that. Amen. Because I tell Mary all the time, what if I would have met you when I was like 18, 19, 20 years old? There's no way we'll be together right now. <laughs> no, not at all. But you know what I'm saying? It was a level of things I had to go through and mature on. So thank God now I can look like my grandfather and look like my older cousin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> thank God for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I um, do want to um, encourage everybody who's out there, the father who are out there listening, happy Father's Day. To the father who are, who are out there and you are active in your child's life, Happy Father's Day. Belated. Um, yeah, happy belated Father's Day, right? We you know, we just gonna celebrate it all month. Right? It's almost over anyway. It is. But <laughs> <laughs> but um but um definitely wanna say happy Father's Day to you all. Um and for the men who are out there, you know you have children out there and you wanna be active in your child's life, go ahead. Don't let nothing stop you. Get out there. Be a part of that child's life. That child needs you more than you know. So be be selfless and think more about your child and less about yourself. Amen. With um, without God, without faith, it's impossible to please God. But with God, all things are possible. Who cares? God cares. Amen. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We love you all. And once again, thank you for tuning in to Throwing Like Eagles. Um, cousin David, Minister David Clark, thank you so much, my brother. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you so very much. Thank you both for the uh, invitation again. Uh, the first time we had some technical technical difficulties, but we got it right this time. <laughs> Praise God. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. All right, you all have a great evening. Enjoy the, your week. Have a great week. Tune in to the more shows we have going on on My Gospel Soul, and we'll catch you next time on Soaring Like Eagles. Thank you. <laughs>